The conspiracy exposed in Bavaria was of an entirely different order. The Illuminati was founded on May 1st, 1776 by Adam Weissop, a professor at Ingolstadt University. Weissop obviously had been a serious student of the occult, for many of its bizarre features and symbols were incorporated into his organization. Weissop had been active in the Masonic lodges of Germany and found in them the perfect vehicle for recruiting into his secret order, which he described publicly as the highest level of Freemasonry. The Illuminati was formally incorporated into the Masonic lodges at the Congress of Wilhelmsbad in 1780. It should be noted that Freemasonry in England and America historically is quite different. Its members are characterized by the highest standards of integrity. Nevertheless, it is a fact that from 1780 on, the Illuminati did flourish as a parasite on the highest levels of the Masonic movement in Europe, especially the Grand Orient Lodges of France. There were eight conspiratorial rings within rings advancing from the outermost novice inward to Rex, or King. The King, of course, was Weissop himself, who had adopted the code name Spartacus. Finally, to see the ultimate goal of the order. It was the destruction of all religion, replaced by the worship of reason, or humanism, and the destruction of all independent governments, replaced by a new world order, a world government, ruled from behind the scenes by the Illuminated Ones. The public record of the Illuminati is quite thin, but it does show that before it was exposed briefly in 1786, it had already enjoyed immense success in attracting into its outer rings some of the most prominent men of Europe. Its roster included important names in both government and finance. It was the most important single force behind the French Revolution. Each year, May 1st is celebrated by communists world over as a day of international solidarity. As mentioned previously, the Illuminati also was founded on May 1st. Undoubtedly, this is merely a coincidence. The symbol of the all-seeing eye is closely associated with the Illuminati. Like many other features of this conspiracy, apparently it was taken by Adam Weissop from the occult symbolism of ancient history. It appears today among the symbols of the Rosicrucians, the Freemasons, and many others around the world, including the Cao Dai in South Vietnam. Undoubtedly, it is merely a coincidence that the all-seeing eye now appears on the alternate side of the great seal of the federal government and also on the one dollar notes of the Federal Reserve System. At the bottom of the seal in Roman numerals there is the date 1776. This of course is the year of American independence. Undoubtedly it is merely a coincidence that it is also the year of the founding of the Illuminati. But then perhaps none of this is merely a coincidence. Regardless of whether there is one controlling group, or two cooperating, or three competing, or four, or ten, in practical terms of what can be done about it, our response must be the same. Conspiracy, as it operates at the highest level in the United States today, rests upon two solid foundations and enjoys the protection of shelter. If we could knock out its foundations, it would collapse, and if we could strip away its shelter, it would wither and die. The shelter is secrecy. The foundations are big government and manipulation of money. No conspiracy can stand the light of exposure. No conspiracy can rule the masses without the tool of an extensive government bureaucracy. And certainly no capitalist conspiracy can long survive without control over the nation's money. Expose the conspiracy. Reduce the size of government. Return our money to a standard that cannot be manipulated. This must be our response. Let us summarize now seven major conclusions. One, there is and has been for some time a conspiracy among some of the richest people in the world. 
a conspiracy that virtually owns the money systems of the major non-communist nations. This monopoly is protected by the power of the respective governments and is used to perpetuate the conspiracy's vast wealth by the creation of money out of nothing. Two, in the United States, this monetary fraud is perpetuated through the Federal Reserve System. Although the executive branch theoretically has some control over this system through occasional appointments, in reality, it is the system and those behind it who control the executive branch. Three, the capitalist conspiracy in this country surfaces to public view in the form of the semi-secret Council on Foreign Relations. Its members exercise their control over the nation through government, tax-exempt foundations, centers of education, and the mass communications media. Four, on the surface, the capitalist conspiracy appears to oppose communism. It spends billions of dollars in spectacular military displays of anti-communism all around the world, but never to the extent of seriously harming the enemy, and certainly not to the extent of defeating it. There is much evidence indicating that the capitalist and communist conspiracies both are directed by a single master conspiracy which may have continuity with the order of the Illuminati, which was founded 200 years ago. 6. As for our response, we must begin to dismantle the conspiracy's machine of big government. We must restore American independence. We must return our schools to local control. We must protect our police forces from federal aid, which is the certain path to a national police force controlled from Washington. We must denounce revenue sharing as a transparent device leading to control over local government. Seven, we must reduce the Federal Reserve System to a service function of clearing checks between banks only. Merely turning the system as it stands over to the federal government, as some have suggested, will not solve the problem. The same people would control it either way. The root of the evil is that money is created out of nothing, and the insiders could do that today just as easily directly through government as they do through the Federal Reserve System. The ultimate solution is to prevent anyone in or out of government from manipulating the money supply. And the only way to do that is to return our money to the gold and silver standards. Eight. We must expose the conspiracy to public view. If somehow every American could be made aware of the facts contained in this presentation, if it were possible to circumvent the establishment's channels of mass communication and carry this message person to person to our friends and neighbors and fellow club members, the conspiracy would collapse.